Story time about a trip to the South Pacific Islands. Sometimes in your travels, you encounter a place that sticks with you forever. And this is the story about one of those places. It's another week of staying at home during the pandemic. And it's also another week of looking at old photos and videos. And this story is a really good one as it takes place in the islands of the South Pacific. One of my favorite places in the entire world. Our story takes place in the Cook Islands. It's a small nation in the South Pacific. It doesn't have a lot of land, but it covers a vast area of the South Pacific Ocean. The Cook Islands has been a favorite place for us to travel to, and over the years I think I've been there seven, eight, or even nine times, I'm not sure at this point, but we've been there a lot. And I even learned how to speak some basic Cook Island Maori language, Kiorana Pea Kauai. We'd use the Cook Islands and Rarotonga as a base for traveling around the islands of the South Pacific. So over the years, we've been to different places like Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, New Zealand, and so on. So there's lots of places to visit down there. Maybe in another look back video, I'll tell you about some of those other places. But for now, let's talk about the Cook Islands and the island of Achu. So this map will give you a reference as to where the island of Achu is. So we're going to start at Los Angeles International Airport, fly across the Pacific Ocean to the island of Achu. So this is a tiny island. As you can see in the very top right hand corner, you've got the landing strip. So that's how small this island is. But it's a great place to visit and let's learn about it. On this trip, we started in Rarotonga, went to Ayatataki, and then finally ended up in Achu. This is the island of Achu from the air as we were landing. And as you can see, we flew a small plane and the airport was very small and we even had a dirt runway. At the airport, we were greeted by the owner of the Achu Motel and she gave us beautiful flower lays and flower hats. These were made of frangipanji, which is also known as plumeria. My dad was the one that filmed this, so he wasn't the best cameraman, but we'll show you some of the videos of that trip. Landing on a dirt runway was something else. <laughs> I think there were a few potholes along the way, but we made it safely and got there with no problems. The motel where we stayed was nice. It had three or four small cabins, and at the time we were there, we were the only tourist. Achu is a famous island um, because it's famous for their coffee. So if you can find Achu coffee, um, it's very good and highly recommended. But the problem is, is the island's so small that they can only grow a very small amount of it. Achu also has some beautiful beaches. If you ever go there, you'll probably be the only person on the beach. One day we met with a local guide and he took us to the Kopeka cave. The Kopekas are a bird and they only live in this certain cave. So we walked through the jungle or did a jungle hike to get to this cave and then we had to climb down into the cave from up above so that was kind of scary. But once we got into the cave it was pretty dark and you can see in this picture here um, that there were only a few small holes where light was coming in. But down at the bottom of the cave there were vines where we could swing just like Tarzan. One of the things that made the island of Achu so memorable for everybody was because it was my mom's birthday. So before we went to the island, my dad reached out to the motel and said, hey, my wife's having her birthday when we're there. Is there any way we could do something special? And the motel wrote back and said, sure, we'll be happy to have an umokai, which is kind of like a luau. So when it was time to go to the umokai, we got dressed up and went over to the community center where they had our umokai all set up and ready to go. We had all kinds of native food, including taro and lots of different kinds of fish. The Atuan people, they're very generous, they're very hospitable, and they're also very social. So you have to remember that they did all of this just for us. 
So let's listen to us get introduced by one of the leaders on the island in the Cook Island Maori language. <laughs> I just want to introduce your name to these people. These people came from Spokane and uh, the father, Mr. Chuck. <laughs> and the wife, Chuck, married to Sharon. And they had two children. First one, Ed. Pora, Pora. Pokia, Pokia. And the daughter, Polly. Polly. And Polly married to John. I'll tell you more about the island after we listen to some of their singing. I'm going to continue talking about the island of Achu and telling you different stories about it. But if you'd like to listen to the unedited version of them singing and dancing, there's a 30 minute video down below titled Achu Dancers. Just go ahead and click on that link and you can watch the entire presentation that the island dancers gave to us that night. At the time that we visited the island, there were less than a thousand residents. The last that I heard, uh, they were down to about 400, and somebody else said even 200. So the people of the island of Achu, it's such a small island that the people are moving to better opportunities and bigger places. So some of them are going to the island of Rarotonga, or others are going on to New Zealand. The island of Achu is also named by its other name, Anua Manu, and that means the land of insects and birds. And I've got a story for you about an insect on the island of Achu. So after the Umukai was over, we went back to our cabin and went into bed. So at that time, they were on diesel generators and they just shut the generator off at night so it was pitch black. I've heard that now they're on solar, so good for them. But anyway, at the time, the lights all went out, and it was pitch black. So I'm in bed, and I hear this noise going like that. And I thought, what is that? So I grabbed my flashlight and looked, and there was a huge bug on the wall. And I got out of bed and started trying to hit it. And I got my shoe and was smacking it. And then my brother and sister came upstairs and like, what's going on? And they saw that bug, and they were trying to get it. And then all of a sudden, this bug started flying around. And it flew and landed on the top of my suitcase. My brother shut the lid of the suitcase and said, we'll deal with it in the morning. And then my sister zipped the suitcase up. Well then, the next day we looked in the suitcase and couldn't find the bug. And we've never been able to find that bug, so as far as I know, it's still in the suitcase. Kind of scary. Another fun thing that we did on the island of Achu was we rented mopeds. So on the island of Achu, all five villages are at the top of the island or in the center of the island. So at some point in the past, everybody moved from the coast to the center of the island. So we decided to rent mopeds and go around the island. So there's a dirt road that goes all the way around the outside of the island, kind of down by the beaches. So we went around the island, and as we were going, we were probably going five, 10 miles an hour, not very fast, but we kept having to stop because of crabs and pigs. So I was like, wow, this is a different kind of traffic than we've had in the big city. And they do drive on the left side of the road there, so that's a little different than in a lot of countries. So as I was driving the moped, people kept yelling at me, you're on the wrong side of the road. So that kind of made me nervous, but it was okay. I didn't wreck. And after a few days on the island, it was time to say arera and leave the island of Achu. Over the years, I've been to the Cook Islands seven, eight, or even nine times. I'm not really sure, but I definitely know I've been to the island of Achu three times. If you ever have the chance to go to the Cook Islands, be sure to visit Ayatataki and go to the island of Achu. 
They're all beautiful places.